Okay. Step one, I had four people today have to redo this because today's is in millimeters, okay? Everyone we've done up till now was inches, right? So this one's millimeters, no? Okay, all right, sketch. Oh, look, I'm in inches, I'm about to start. Millimeters, oh, I had someone do it in meters too. Don't do meters, okay, millimeters. All right, sketch. So to start this, we're gonna start by drawing this shape on the front plane, okay? All right. Ideally, we're just gonna draw half of it and mirror it, okay? So we're, we're ignoring this half on the right. We're gonna start with the left half, okay? And actually, I really wanna take this and what's it called? What's it called again? Key something? Yeah. Key clock. Oh my gosh, key clock. It's not starting off good. I wanna open this file location. I wanna open this baby and paint because I wanna paint on it a little bit. Open with so I can explain things a little better. What about paint 3D? What's that look like? Huh? What's paint 3D look like? Oh, where is, there it is, okay. Oh, don't try and do it with me. You have no shot. Nothing personal, it's everyone. How do I move this? <laughs> do I need this thing right here? Why is this, why? 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 What about regular paint? See how I got this big thing right there? Anyone know how to get rid of it? Of course not. Of course not. How about this? This is good, right? And then I got that thing flopping all up in my face. All right, here we go. That's better. Okay, so we're trying to draw this half, whoop, this half thing right here. And I, the origin, it is very important that your origin be here, be here. Okay, that's where we want our origin to go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a center line from this origin going up, um, doesn't matter how long. And then I'm gonna just start drawing this thing like I see it basically. So I've got a circle floating out here in space somewhere. Um, let's just make it here, okay? And I wanna set the size of this circle to Let's say it's the smallest one. The smallest circle has a diameter of 10. Look, I was pretty close, 10.3, all right, that's that. And then um, it's got another circle right here. It's bigger. That is how big? 20, okay. So I got those. Now, I need to place this in space, this circle in space. So the only dimension I have over here that places it is this 30 left and right. Um, so I'm going to do a smart dimension from the center of the circles to the center line and set that to 15. And then it's going to be, the reason why it's still blue is because it's floating up and down. So there's no dimensions on here that tell you exactly where the centers of these circles are up and down. But once you add like all the tangent relationships that happen here and that happen here, it kind of works itself out and becomes black. So really you have to just kind of go with this and keep drawing some other stuff. So um, at the top, let's zoom in here. And here's the part that I've been messing up on all day, okay? What you have is there is a line that exists here and then it goes into a curve, okay? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna do line, and just because everyone's been asking me a million times today, they're like, how do you connect to the tangent? As long as you are just on, not on a quadrant, like that's a quadrant, that's a quadrant. If you click here on the circle, it will assume you want to be on the tangent. And the tangent location is based upon where you click next. So I'm just going to click like here-ish. And then I have a tangent relationship right there. Does that make sense? That, that needs to be tangent at that point. Okay, then you have an arc that just goes from there to the center line. So I'm gonna start with the line tool, move my mouse off, move my mouse on for a second. So it starts converting it to an arc and then make sure you click on the center line. Um, try and eyeball it to make it look right because that'll make it easier later. All right, escape that. Okay, what do I know about this? I know that the curve is radius five. So I'll go ahead and set that smart dimension here to Trying to make it neat. Mm, how about that? Radius five. 
All right, now that curve is at least the correct radius and it can still move, all right? Some stuff's still moving around, which is fine. All right, let's start building some of the bottom. So here's the part that I missed all day. There is a tiny little line right here. And if you don't put that line in, it, whenever you try and add some dimensions later, it all gets jacked up. So make sure that you draw a line. If you just try and do all day, I just made a curve with no line. There is a little piece of a line, and I'm going to exaggerate it here, that exists right there. Huh? Yep, from the, from the quadrant of the circle. And then it goes tangent into um, something like this, and then it goes over to there, okay? Now, I do know the distance from here to here because it says 12, so I can set that as half of that, which is six. And then I do also know the radius of this, which is eight. I can get, hello, hello, Bobby, it's happening. Okay, eight, all right, starts looking a little better. And then I've got, well, I gotta zoom out here a little bit on this side, and then I've got, let's get rid of all those red lines. These two dimensions right here, the 41 and the 65, I can set. So the 41 has to go from the bottom here to there. I probably should have done this earlier because this is probably going to mess everything up. So when I set that to 41, oh, everything moved pretty good. That's that's okay then. Um, and then the 65 goes from here to the center of that arc Let's see if i can set that 65 and then the last thing to get it to go all black because this is still blue this is the center of that same arc right there it needs to be in line with this center line so i click on that center and then i hold control and click that and set it to coincide it and then it moves the center of that arc to there and everything locks in place so I don't know how long this line is, and I don't know how long this line is. Yep, I'm missing one thing, the angle, that's right. 83, I hope it just works because if I did it wrong, I'm gonna be upset. Oh no, no, here we go, here we go. No, um, I've done half of 83 all day. Let me just go back a little bit though. <laughs> It's gonna be one of them days, one of them days. Let's erase this. Let's set the angle first. So what's half of 40 or 83? 41.5, right? So I'm gonna click there, click there, uh, 41.5. Okay, that gives me that. Let's set this to the, I'm gonna set the center of this arc to this coincident. And then I'm going to set, I think I know what I did wrong. That, it's going to be like that. Okay, so another thing that you could not tell on this drawing is if I zoom in here, this is crazy, ready? This is a crazy part. Okay, what happens here is, that's a little large. Can I get a good brush? This is, a, what's pencil? How about this? That looks good. Okay, so we know there's a line there and then it goes into an arc. But what I don't know is, is there a line here or does this arc just continue past the quadrant? Okay, imagine the green circle. This arc could be just continuing like it starts here and then goes like that. It's just a little bit curved like that. And I can't tell by looking at the picture. So there's two ways you can do this. You can, what I would do is just erase this. This sets a coincident to that. You can erase that, everything will turn blue. And then when you do your 60, what was it? 65, it'll work from there to there, 65. Cause it's now able to move and it makes, it just makes this curve a little longer. Um, you know what I mean? Or, you could make a little line right there and that also works. Like you could erase this line. Let me erase that. You could have another little line. I didn't do that 
I didn't do it this way, but you could have another little line right there and just use like a fillet or something. What was the radius of this? Eight. And you can fill it this line to here and set it to eight. That's eight. Hello, eight. Like that. And it ends up with just a tiny straight line. The only different, I mean, there's either way works. There's either a that curve continuing right there or there's a little line there. Well, however you want to do it. Okay, that's why the, that's the annoying part of this one was figuring all that stuff out. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, from there, once everything's black, it's just selecting it all, mirroring it. Nope, Billy, don't move it. Don't move it. The other part's tricky. But that's the trickiest. Okay, um, I've got that. Oh, I should have probably trimmed that stuff, right? Trim there, there. Okay, exit. Features, control seven, extrude. This part's important. Later in our drawing, I'm going to need a plane in the middle of this thing. So whenever you do this extrude, do a mid plane and set it to three. That way it extrudes both directions because I'm going to need the plane that exists in the middle later. Okay. Ugh. You awake? Sorry. I know. Anyway. Okay, next part is going to be this cylinder. Now, if you made, if you put the origin the same place I did, you have um, this plane, the top plane, sitting in the exact location you need in order for you to make a circle and just extrude it up. So that's why I was stressing how important it was to put the origin down here so that we can make this step super easy. So the size of this circle is nine, as it says on detail C right here. Um, so I'm gonna make a smart dimension here, set that to nine. And it gets press pulled up 45.5. That will get us to here. Okay, so features, extrude, press pull it up 45.5. Now we're there, check mark, All right? Now we have this. Okay, let's go over here. We need to create this little hat or dome or whatever it is up here because it doesn't exist right now. The way to do that is in the front plane, which is going right through the middle of our object, we need to make basically a quarter of a circle that looks like this, okay? And then we're gonna revolve it around our axis, which is the line going straight down the middle. All right, so here's how you do it. A lot of people mess this part up because you got to click front plane first and then click sketch. Because if you click sketch, the next place you click, it'll draw on that face. So select the front plane first. That's the plane going right through the middle and then click sketch, okay? And what you're going to do is just zoom in here. You're going to draw a line from this midpoint going up 4.5. And then you're going to draw a line from here. It goes out past this little thing, also 4.5. I'm going to go ahead and add those dimensions because 4.5 is half of nine. So 4.5 there, 4.5 there, and it should stick out past it a little bit. And then I'll make an arc. Do the line tool, click there, move my mouse, hover back over it, click there. And I don't have to put this dimension on. It'll already say 4.5. So that's that. Exit the sketch. So what I've created is basically just a little piece of pie right there, right, right in the middle. And then I go to features, revolve. And when it asks you to click your axis, so if, if your sketch includes the axis, you can just click that line in your sketch. So you don't have to make an axis for this. It'll just click there, boom, that's the hat. Okay, one, two more parts. Woo. Next part is this cut through the bottom. It's pretty simple. You just zigzag, where's zigzag? Here? Yeah. So that's just cutting through. It's, it's showing you that we're cutting through a material. This little slot right here is the hole that we have to make. And on the bottom view, it gives us the size. It's a square, but it has rounded corners. So go sketch, sketch, bottom, Save some time by doing a center rectangle, click the origin. So again, we're using the origin. It's very important that we put that origin in the right place to begin with. 4.5 this way, 4.5 this way. Sorry, bless you. 
The next part's crazy though, so don't lose me yet. Fill it. The radius, someone asked me if this was 0.2 or 0.4 today. It's 0.2. I don't know why they asked me that. 0.2. Click, 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 click. Bada bing, bada boom. Check. Check again, please. Okay. All right. Control seven. And we are going to extrude that up 25 because it says so right there. Extrude cut, actually. Extrude cut 25. 25. Boom. Check. Okay. So now we got that hole going through the bottom there. Last part. Okay. Um, on the last couple of drawings we did, we've been using Revolve a lot, right? So these are a revolved cut. There, there's three of them. You can do them all in one sketch. Um, I think there's a zoomed in view somewhere. Where's it at? Okay. Yeah, but that, that's kind of confusing. I don't know. I like looking at this one. It's basically a circle here, a circle here, and a circle here. Wait. Nope. Don't leave. Don't leave. I have a reason to keep you here. Okay. Sketch. Sketch. Front plane. Okay. Again, that's the plane that goes right through the middle. We need three circles. The bottom one is dimensioned. It says 25 from the bottom to, look, notice, notice. It's from the bottom to the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna pop a circle right here. The size of the circle is one because it says radius 0.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that. Size of the circles are one, 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 one. All right, escape. Now, SolidWorks does not let you snap when making a dimension to the bottom quadrant of the circle, okay? So what you have to do is do a smart dimension, click at the bottom here, and then you'll click at the center and do math to figure out where it's supposed to be. If it's supposed to be 25 to there, and then the diameter of the circle is one, what does this dimension need to be, Billy? <laughs> 25.5, max gaps. So that goes there. And then there is a gap of one in between the tops and bottoms. I never, you should never draw lines to, to put things in the right place. You should always just draw the thing that you need to extrude or cut and then set the size of it and then dimension its location. So this would be, if the gap in between the circles needs to be one and the diameter of the circles is also one, we take it and we have two in between. Last one, we've got smart dimension here, diameter one, and the gap between this one will also be two. Did I type that right? Yeah. So there, exit sketch. Now, since my axis is not included in the sketch, I have to make a axis, bro. How do I make an axis? Do you remember? Uh, features, you do the thing. features, you do the thing. Good, good explanation. You go to reference geometry axis. Yeah. All you got to do is click on the cylinder and it'll by automatic default, put it in the middle. Okay. And now click sketch five on the left, click revolve cut. When it asks you for the axis of revolution, click there, it'll cut it around and we're done. Um, the material is supposed to be what? Brass? Brass. Here's the mass. Let's see if I got it right. Uh, I can't get to the mass because I got this thing popping up here. Okay, here we go. Tools, tools, evaluate, mass properties. 39.28 is what you should get. And I put it in on the website. Ari, you see it? 39.28 and I got it right after failing all morning. Okay, y'all good? Lost you at the start, I recorded it. So I'll, I'll come help you, but for the first piece, front plane. You cannot minimize Zoom when you are recording this meeting.